Nerve Center, where tonight it's the rematch as the number four ranked University of Hawaii Rainbow Warriors play host to the Lions of Emmanuel. And this is Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. Hi everybody, happy Aloha Friday. Glad you could join us, Scott Robbs, along with James Anastasiadis and of course, Ryan Kalei Suji. These two teams met oh, about 48 hours ago on Wednesday here at Simplify Arena. And the results, Hawaii won in three, though it wasn't much of an efficient match for Hawaii. As you see, the Bows only hit a buck 78. The Lions hit negative 031. Hawaii pretty much dominated in most of the offensive categories. And let's take a look at some of the highlights from that night. We start off with the Aces, Hawaii with a dozen. Hawaii had an incredible service night that night. We saw a lot of fresh faces off the bench. Here, Kurt Nurser really cranked it up, and I think we saw a little bit of that thumb down Charlie Wade might not like, but it worked. Spiros Hawkins continues to have a phenomenal season, really leading this team offensively. But one of the biggest things that he also contributes is his solid passing. Spiros having a All-American type of season already. And Sakanoko from France got his debut on Wednesday night, and what an incredible athlete. We saw some very big moments from this player, and that diving save like that one right there, but he contributed in all aspects. And Keone, them coming off, actually not coming off the bench, but getting an opportunity to start for the injured Chaz Galloway came through and really had a complete match only played two sets but led the team with kills we'll see Keone Thim again tonight in that starting rotation it was kind of a whole hum performance I thought by Hawaii a lot of guys got a chance to play the hitting percentage not where you would want it Hawaii was never in danger of even losing a set that night they weren't, and even though the hitting percentage wasn't great, I think the serving was pretty spectacular. To have 12 aces in one match with 10 errors, that's a little bit more of a 1-1, uh, a little bit higher than a 1-1 ratio. And again, I think there was a little bit of excitement from the people off the bench. They had a little bit of that nerve, a little too excited, trying to show what they could do. I think tonight's going to be a different story. And I think one of the things that Charlie Wade is looking for is stability. Right now, there's a lot of moving pieces, and he's looking to find the right lineup and the right players to come in and really compliment and help this team. And so we're gonna see a different starting lineup tonight. Charlie Wade going with Sakunoko in the opposite position, then we'll continue to be on the outside. We could also see some movement in the middle. Uh, another thing that also happened that hurt, maybe hurt the team this week was that Hoy was out with, was without a second setter. Tonight, Kevin Calling is actually warming up an incredible recovery for the backup All-American setter who is now being able to help manage that offense of the B side. Yeah, got hurt in that very first match in the warm-ups uh, last week when Hawaii was getting ready for Loyola Chicago. But I thought Sakunoko, he was the one that got the most oohs and ahs on Wednesday. He really did. And I think what came from that was his sheer athleticism. We're used to Chaz Galloway being crazy athletic. We're used to Keone Tim being very athletic. We're used to Spiros Hawkins being very athletic. To add another fourth incredible athlete, and he brought it from the service line. A freshman to come in and serve 70 plus plus miles an hour was pretty spectacular. And I think when you look at it also, I mean, if you have Sakunoko and Keone Tham on the court at the same time, those are two servers that are dialing it in over 70 miles an hour. You add Spiros Hakka to that, who's also a great server. So really, Charlie Wade looking for some arsenal, not only offensively, but from behind the service line. You know, also Spiros Hawkins. I mean, he is the steady guy on this team. He only played the first two sets, seven kills, hit over 400. He just always brings his lunch mail. He really does, and it just speaks to the experience that Spiros has. And I think what really benefited his game coming into the season was getting that experience with the senior national team back home over the summer. Not only did he get to represent his country, he also got to play against some of the best opponents in the world at the men's and Olympic level. And again, he's been steady Eddie since he's come, but every year he brings something new. And I think this is the most efficient we've seen him start. Yeah, and I also think another player that is that mature and calming factor for his team is Guillermo Boss. I think both of these players in Hakas and Boss are really the elder statesmen to help bring along the newcomers, the 17-year-olds on this team, to help mature this team and help bring that stability. All right, it should be a fun one, the rematch here on a Friday night. Of course, the guys that will be calling the action their courtside, we welcome Kanoa and Chris. Hey, thanks a lot, Scott. Yes, next to C-Mac, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And as Ryan was alluding to C-Mac, we're going to see a couple of lineup changes to start this match, and it will include the guy who has... Uh, prompted quite the buzz here around town. Louis Sakanoko with those lightning bolt serves. He is gonna get the started opposite. He is going to serve first. 
in every set. Uh, what does that do to the dynamic of the service rotation and this Hawaii offense overall? Well, I think, first of all, he's going to serve first. And guess who's going to serve second? Kimmy Fim. <laughs> How about two 70-mile-an-hour-plus guys serving one and two? I think, I think Spiros is like number four. Uh, so there's some really, really good servers. Boss has been told he has to keep it in just in case those other guys <laughs> that's miss. Right, that's right. With the jump float. Got to get the jump float in. Exactly. Yeah. But it's going to be a whole new, different dynamic tonight watching this lineup. Charlie Waits said he thinks this might be his final lineup, but it's going to take about a month to get, get together. Yeah, another thing that he added is, you know, this is a chance for us to tinker a little bit here. Night two against Emmanuel. He says, I know what I can get from Alaka Itad. He's a proven veteran commodity. I know what I can get from Chaz Galloway. Same thing, right? The guy who has been there, done that. He said, this is our chance over the course of the next few weeks in the non-conference slate. This is our chance to try something different. And if it works, fantastic. If not, he has known commodities to turn back to. Absolutely. And it, it really gives him a lot of confidence going into the road trip as well. You know, they have a week off. They'll have a good chance to do a lot of practice this next week. And then, then they have Indiana and Purdue, Fort Wayne. Uh, and I think Ball State, really good opponents on the road. <clears throat> so he, he's looking forward to that lineup being tested again on the road, which is different than playing here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Meanwhile, on the other side for Emmanuel, Aiden Feeney. He was a guy who uh, was very active in all facets of the game, including a little bit of junk talking through the net, some gesticulating. He was uh, already one of the uh, top line celebrators uh, in college volleyball, but he had a strong match, seven kills, hit 105, and also had four blocks the other night. Yeah, he, he played well. I talked to Coach before the game, Coach Friddle, and he said, oh my goodness, please, Please, Aiden, no more of that. <laughs> Don't poke the bear. That last celebration he had where he was stomping on a block that was too short or whatever it was. That was kind of was that what it yeah, was? Yeah. And, and he said, oh, my goodness, do not go poke the bear. The rainbows are going to take it out. And he says, I hope they didn't watch our, our the replay last night because they're certainly going to come after Aiden tonight if they, if they watched it. Yeah, and our uh, pregame uh, James Friddle pants watch. Uh, he is... Yeah. Uh, Toning it down a little bit, you could say. The E for Emmanuel uh, scattered across just a, you know, standard gray pair of pants. Yeah, this is not like him at all, but <laughs> but but who else who else has 17 E's on their that's pants? That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, by his standards, that's actually kind of mellow. Uh, yeah. That's what's really interesting. Uh, what a development here, but uh, James Friddle, uh, always a pleasure, and we'll see what how this plays out here, the Hanaho rematch between Hawaii and Emmanuel. We'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Of course, this is a non-conference matchup. We look at the non-conference schedule for Hawaii. Last week, Loyola Chicago. This week, Emmanuel. You heard uh, Chris mention they have a bye week and then they'll head to the Midwest, where hopefully temperatures will be a little warmer than what they're supposed to be this week. And then they'll come home in February. They'll take on Tusculum and then some familiar names. You see Stanford, uh, Missouri S&T. That's a new program and then uh, Sacred Heart, but then they have the outrigger where you got Lewis, Grand Canyon, and UC Irvine in a non-conference matchup. We talked to Charlie about putting together this schedule. No longer do all the West Coast teams exclusively play themselves. You know, at one point we had a 13-team league, we had 12 league opponents, there's 24 matches. We host the outrigger at 27, you only get 28 dates. So there was no non-conference schedule and everyone just got used to seeing the same names. Those days are long gone. If you look at our schedule, it's very similar to what all the other teams are doing. You'll see some of the other MPSF teams come here, we'll play them at their place occasionally, but a lot of other teams that are relatively new to men's volleyball. We've added a lot of new teams, we've added whole new leagues. We filled it completely to 28 dates, which not all teams in men's volleyball are able to do. And also we filled it with all Division One, Division Two opponents. These are all matches that count towards the RPI and those kind of things, strength of schedule. Um, and we just, you know, we don't have the luxury of being in Southern California and driving up and down the 405 and just finding teams to play. Well, Ryan, men's volleyball is one of the fastest growing sports in the NCAA. What do you think about the schedule, the non-conference schedule? Well, I mean, when you look at it, right, it really just, uh, this uh, Hawaii schedule, you look and you see the evolution of the sport. I mean, gone are the days, back in the days in the 90s, Hawaii would play an opponent four times at times. They would play them twice here and then twice on the road. 
just because there weren't a lot of teams. And now we're just seeing all these different names from schools that may, many of us have never even heard of, but it just goes to show just how the sport is growing. And I think it also uh, does well for this, this, uh, the sport overall. When a named uh, program like Hawaii is taking on a team like Emmanuel, it gives further exposure for these teams. And I think we're gonna continue to just see this grow. But I think for Hawaii overall, it helps to build their confidence as they head into what is the most competitive conference in the country. I agree with you, Ryan, and I think the schedule really allowed Hawaii to figure out their rhythm and really get into a kind of chemistry with this new team. You know, like we mentioned, we're going to see a lot of different lineups. Charlie, trying to figure out which lineup's going to work best for this team come those slightly harder opponents. And again, the growth of sport for someone that's just been in it, and when I was getting recruited, there was only 30 schools to see how fast it's grown, and it's grown at 47.5%. Statistically, it's the fastest growing sport in the world. It's just super exciting to be able to see so many different opponents on there. I like seeing some of these programs we've never seen before, and you're right, it's good for the sport. Alrighty, we're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we're gonna hear from a local boy, Alakai Todd. Welcome back to Manoa, the rematch, number four, Hawaii and Emmanuel. There you see Alakai Todd. He'll get the night off here this evening, but he has been the starting opposite for the first three matches of the season out of Kailua and Punahou School. You see his numbers through three matches. I'm sure he'd like to get that hitting percentage up just a tad bit more, but let's find out more about Alakai. He's been around some, some pretty high-level players. Um, and there's been times throughout that where we, he's been just as good as all of them. So um, really for him just to, to keep grinding away and, you know, we kind of push him a little bit to just uh, maybe with a sense of urgency or just a little bit more fire in it, um, I think really helps his game. And he's been able to bring that for the last couple weeks here now and um, really off to a great start for the season. I just want to make leadership kind of an open style. So like anybody on the team can critique or add information to anyone else on the team. So it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior, you can still hold everyone accountable. So that's like one of the leadership and culture styles that we've fostered on the team. But obviously some of the veteran guys definitely have a little bit more pull and respect just from how much time they've put into the program. So just using that to show the younger guys that everyone's included and that we're all working at it together to come to the same goal, which is to win a national championship at the end of the year. All right, it's time now to say what? It is sponsored by Heineken. And you know, you look at Alakai, a guy that bided his time. He was behind Farapunov, he was behind Mukleus, and now he's getting his shot. Yeah, you know, I think one of the bright spots about uh, Alakai Todd is just you've seen his evolution over the years. He's a player that has gotten better every single year and every single season. And uh, there's just a different style and, and just swagger that he has this season. He's taking it very seriously. And while he may not start tonight, we may still see him inserted into the lineup. Uh, he had sort of an off night on Wednesday, but played really well last week against a very good Loyola team. So I think in the long run, uh, Alakai Todd is a player that we will continue to see throughout the season. I agree with you. And I think the most exciting thing with Alakai Todd is I've seen his ceiling at practice and he hasn't shown it in a game yet. So there is so much more that Alakai could provide for this team. And I'm super excited as he gets a little bit more comfortable in these game-like situations as the season goes on to really show the NCAA what he is capable of doing because it's pretty spectacular. He has a very high ceiling and we haven't seen it yet. What kind of surprised me more than anything last week was how effective his serving was. He racked up a handful of aces. He doesn't serve a 70 mile an hour ball, but he's got a lot of top spin. That thing just loops and falls down. It really does. And I think the biggest reason for that is he doesn't put too much heat, but how high that ball's coming from, it's able to cross the net and really just drop. So it's very deceiving as a passer to be able to pass a ball like that. And one of the other things that he just brings is that leadership. The player that has been with the program, he's able to kind of share this warrior philosophy that has been developed over the years and sort of the expectation that this team has for its players to some of the younger players. And he's also a different kind of opposite than what we saw with Mukli. So I thought it was more of a finesse opposite, if you will. He's more of a prototypical six foot nine, 
you know, heavy ball, hard hitting opposite. He is, and again, I said it on Wednesday night. He's a little bit more like Radovar Punov's mm -hmm. playing style. We're not, they're gonna, not gonna run it fast. It's gonna be a slightly higher ball, and he's just gonna have to reach for it. Again, standing at six nine, almost touching twelve feet when he's jumping. You want him to try and hit up and over blocks, not power through them. How does he become? more consistent, Ryan. Is that one of the things he probably needs to work on the most? Yeah, and I think when you look at it overall, he just hasn't had a lot of game time experience. So the opportunities that he has to play uh, in these types of matches will only help him and give him confidence because a lot of times he's only played in a third set uh, oftentimes or coming off the bench playing behind some of those big names. All right, should be a fun one. We may or may not see Alakai out there this evening. He said he's a little banged up. It's more of a precaution, but it should be fun. Happy Aloha Friday from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Hawaii. Rematching with Emmanuel. Let's take a look now at the stat leaders for the Lions from Wednesday. That's right, Aiden Finley, who knows how to celebrate. We'll see what kind of celebrations we see tonight. Seven kills leading his team. You also have Neves, who also had a, a you know pretty yeah, subpar nine negative set. Well, not subpar, struggled. Neves struggled uh, outside there. Subpar is uh, fair. Sure. <laughs> uh, as well as Eli Zado, uh, who also came in with four kills, hitting negative 158. All right, for the University of Hawaii, their leaders Wednesday. We had the high-flying Kioni Tim, who led the team with eight kills, hitting an incredible 375 hitting percentage. And then the veteran Spiros Hakas, who added himself seven kills in the one set that he played, hitting 417. And again, someone that we haven't really talked about too much this season, Guilherme Voss, had six kills, hitting 750, and he's still trying to find that connection with Greg Rosenthal. All right, guys, take a seat on the coach's couch. Let's talk about this rematch. What are you guys looking for from Hawaii and Emmanuel here this evening? Well, I, I'm excited to see this new starting lineup and see how things adjust with Hawaii having different players in different positions. Not only are we seeing new players, but they're starting in a different lineup. They're also flipping the middles. Uh, it's very technical, but Jeremy Voss is actually moving uh, to next to the setter. And so, you know, they're just doing different things with matchups overall and trying to find what best works for this team. Uh, and so what I'm looking for is just to find, see if this is a lineup that can provide some consistency overall and, and also just to see how they all click over, uh, together as a team. For Emmanuel, I think they're gonna have to come out with a little bit more efficiency. They're gonna have to be a little bit more efficient from the service line, maybe put the Rainbow Warriors in a little bit more of an out of system set. And again, just from the hitting side, not make as many errors as they did, hitting negative, 0 .0, 0 0.098 uh, in the first night on Wednesday is a little bit rough. You're not going to win a lot of games doing that or be in not that gonna game. not going to win any games doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just going to have to be a little bit more efficient when they're hitting and from the service line. Let's get back to Hawaii, Ryan, because you mentioned kind of a new lineup. We were talking Wednesday about who's going to come off the bench and things like that. With this kind of change up of the lineup, I think Charlie's gonna leave them out a little bit longer tonight? I think so. I think we may see this lineup for the first and second set because he's trying to just find a rhythm overall. We may see some of those players that we saw start last uh, on Wednesday night get inserted maybe a little bit later in the match. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna be as loosely as substitutions as we saw on Wednesday night. I think he's really trying to solidify this and using these matches as an opportunity for these players to get experience. I think so too. And again, if this is a lineup that Charlie's looking to put in Later on in the season, they're going to have to find that chemistry. They're going to have to find that connection together. So being able to play those two sets out, even if they're struggling a little bit to try and find a rhythm, it's going to be important. What I'm curious to see is now you have two of the biggest serving subs that come off the bench. Is he going to use anyone from the bench as a serving sub for the middles in this game? How about Keone Thim? I thought he played well the other night. He hit like 375. He had eight kills. Chaz is out again here tonight. This is a real opportunity, I think, for, Ke for Keone to, to make that a battle between he and Chaz for that spot. And I think one of the things for Keone Thim is he always feels like he's coming off the bench and he always has something to prove, right? Like, because he hasn't, he gets maybe one set to show his stuff and then he's kind of subbed back out. And so this is a chance for him to maybe just relax a little bit, let the game come to him. He doesn't need to do all the flashy things. He's gonna be the starter here. He He's gonna play. And so he needs to just allow the game come for him and not put so much pressure on himself to keep that serve in, to hit that 70 mile hour, uh, hour serve. So uh, hopefully that we see that side of Keone tonight. And it's the unfortunate side for Chaz Galloway. It puts him in a very 
pickle situation because Keone Thim can do incredible things and if he does play, he could solidify that starting position moving on in the rest of the season. And we all know he's more than capable of doing it. And that just speaks to the depth of this Hawaii team. All right, the three of us will be back at intermission. But coming up next, it's Hawaii and Emmanuel, night number two with Kanoa and Chris calling all the action. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to another exciting evening of Warrior Ball 24. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi. And fans, please remove your hats. Veterans are encouraged to render a hand salute. Volleyball fans singing tonight, a vocal student of Kalenaku de Lima entered her and Hawaii Stars in 2019 vocal contest, and she was the winner. Ramsey was also one of the teen choir members featured on Kalenaku and Kalai Parish's single written for the Mauna, We Are a Voice. Please welcome to the Simplify Arena at the Stan Sheriff Center, Ramsey Sadiaren. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Good evening, everyone. The Rainbow Ohana welcomes you to Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for tonight's NCAA Men's Volleyball Contest matching Conference Carolinas member, the Emmanuel Lions. 
Versus Big West Conference member, your fourth ranked Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. <laughs> Introducing the Emmanuel Lions starting lineup. At opposite, six-one freshman from Kissimmee, Florida, number four, Lucas Nieves. And outside hitter, 6'5", sophomore from Port Ritchie, Florida, number six, Aiden Feeney. At center, 5'11", sophomore from Montville, U, Texas, co-captain number eight, Noah Langelier. And outside hitter, six foot senior, from Greenville, South Carolina, number 15, Eli Zadonik. And Libero, 5'11", senior from Lee's Summit, Missouri, floor captain, number 19, Nicholas Seikenberger. And middle blocker, 6'6", six, six, freshman, from Delafield, Wisconsin, number 20, Greg Bodis. And that middle blocker, 6'5", freshman from Melbourne, Australia, number 21, Andrew Michael. The assistant coach is John Papa Frittle. Head coach for the Lions, James Frittle. And now, meet and greet the starting lineup for your Hawaii Rainbow. Warriors! At Libero, 5'7", Jr. from Waialai, Oahu. Number five, Eliu Choi! At middle blocker, 6'9", sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number eight, Kurt Nusterer. At center, 6'8", freshman from Manhattan Beach, California. Number 13, Trent Rosenthal. And outside hitter, six foot senior from Kaimuki, Oahu. Number 20, Keone Thin. And middle blocker, six seven senior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Number 21, Guilherme Voss. And opposite, six five freshman from Paris, France, number 23, Louis Sakamoko. And that outside hitter, six four senior from Nea Smirni, Greece, floor captain, number six, Speedos Hakas. The assistant coaches are Kupono Faye and Chad Giesman. Associate coach Milan Zarkovic. Head coach for your Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade.
behind 12 aces from the service line. The fourth-ranked Hawaii men's volleyball team swept the manual to open a two-match non-conference series between the Lions and the Rainbow Warriors Wednesday night. In the midweek match, Hawaii's freshman Frenchman, Louis Sakonoko, made his collegiate debut, impressing the crowd with three blistering aces. Coming up, the Hanaho rematch between the Emmanuel Lions and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. And with that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. c -Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, for Emmanuel, give Feeney some help. Aiden Feeney had seven of the team's 16 kills on a Wednesday night. If the Lions want to roar, they'd better up their kill total. And for UH, more rest for Spiros. Well, perfect time to rest the senior and let the other three high flyers battle for that second outside position. Well, Spiros will be out there to start this match at least, but Luis Sakonoko making his first career start, and he is the first to serve. Caused quite a stir from the service line a couple of nights ago, and the Lions unable to return that initial serve in transition. So the Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups at the bottom of your screen. Sakonoko making his first career start. Keone Thim starting at the outside hitter position, making his third career start. Chaz Galloway, according to Charlie Wade, is available, but uh, he is opting for rest uh, for his veteran senior outside. You saw about a 50 mile an hour serve there. There's a, there's about a 65. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Here's Feeney, hits it into the pin again. And so two serves for Sakonoko and two points for Hawaii. Louis Sakonoko, the freshman Frenchman, 6'5", from Paris, France, joined the team just after Christmas. Has only practiced, according to Charlie Wade, uh, maybe 10 times with this club. <laughs> Let's see if he hits this one even harder. Oh my gosh. And it is three nothing just like that. Charlie Wade, get the radar gun fixed. We need to see how fast this guy's hitting the ball. That had to be high 70s, don't you think, Kanoa? Yeah, that sign, kaboom, very accurate yeah. in terms of the description here. Yeah, the uh, radar guns and monitors, unfortunately, uh, they're on the fritz. And so, uh, they need to upgrade those because we need to know how fast some of these serves are. Yeah. Took something off that time and popped it into the twine. But uh, Charlie Wade will take that, right? A four serve run behind the line for Louis Sakonoko. Absolutely. He'll take that every time. Head coach for Emmanuel, James Friddle, in his sixth season. Speaking of causing a stir, uh, his pants the other night caused quite a stir. And uh, he's following it up with. Uh, I guess by his standard, something a little more tame. Here's Sakonoko, some high cheddar look out. Nicholas Eichenberger taking one off the dome. Boy, he took a shot there. That's he is one gutsy libero too, I'll tell you. He, he's not afraid of anything. He's backing up there and just could not get out of the way. That was ferocious and dangerous and good to see that Eichenberger Little blurry he's, eyed there. He's saying he's okay, but you see some redness there on that side of his face. Now Keone Thim gets an ace. So you go from Sakonoko to Thim, two guys in the serving rotation, C-Mac, that can top 70 miles an hour. On a regular basis, not just occasionally, on a regular basis, these two guys are 70 plus. I think it's comparable to, to trying to have to hit a Maybe a 100 mile an hour fastball in baseball, what do you think? Yeah, I would say so. Officials, the officials taking a timeout here. I think they're gonna have Eichenberger get looked at. Might have some blood trickling from the nostril. And so they're going to tend to him. And the crowd, always a smart volleyball crowd, appreciative of the opponent's efforts, uh, giving Eichenberger a, a well-deserved ovation as you take a look at Charlie Wade in his 15th year atop this program. You know what else I think they're going to check on Eichenberger? I think they're going to check, uh, make a concussion check on him too. They, they, could, they could run a couple of, of those kinds of tests too. He, he appears to be okay, didn't exhibit any kind of wooziness, but flashes a shocker to the crowd. 
And this is a tough guy right here and an all-around volleyball player. 5'11 senior from Lee's Summit, Missouri. Uh, he started in different stretches last season at the libero position, the outside hitter position, and the setter position. And number seven in the USA and Diggs Perset. You know, in warm-ups today too, I noticed how he was doing some coaching too. You know, Friddle, I think, was in the hallway talking to somebody and out there was Eichenberg working with his setter and uh, trying to give him a few tips on how to, you know, give the young freshman how to set the ball better. It was really an interesting kind of a, you know, Langelier, he was giving some, some uh, really interesting information to the young freshman to get him to be a, a better setter. And they're talking see, right yeah, now, talking, the two we're talking yeah. around. He had 221 digs last year. You mentioned he was seventh in the nation in digs per set. He also averaged about two kills per set. Uh, and not just because, you know, he had one run, one set in the front row. Uh, he was a yeah. regular fixture at the outside hitter position in addition to his libero role. So uh, a guy who's done quite a bit in his career and good to see that he's uh, still out there. They took some extra time to wipe what appeared to be some uh, drops of blood off of the Terraflex. And we continue. Five serving one, and Eichenberger pops it straight up in the air. So high ball bump set. This is Eli Zadonik, and he gets smothered. That block by Hawaii, six hands across, would eclipse the sun. Yeah, it's almost as good as an ace when it, when Kyoni Fim forces a bad pass. Three blockers can get up because they know there's only one place the set can go. Kyoni Fim, who had three aces to go along with eight kills, hit 375 the other night. Another great serve. And that one going to be lollipopped over there by Lucas Nieves. Now Spiros Hakas straight down to the floor. So Charlie Wade was telling us before the match, C-Mac, that he wanted his servers to set a tone. It most certainly has looked like that has taken place. Timeout Lions. Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. You can download today on the App Store or Google Play. Well, an early timeout by Emmanuel head coach James Friddle, C-Mac. The first two servers for Hawaii making quite a statement here at the top end of this opening frame as you take a look at the series record. Now, this is the third meeting. This Hawaii, is exactly of course, winning how, on Wednesday. Exactly how... Charlie Wade scripted out tonight's play. He really likes having Finn go as the number two server, his number one server, Sakamoto. Seven serving one out of the timeout. That one tickled the tape. Emmanuel out of system again, though. Here's Nieves into the twine, and Hawaii off and running here. Eight serving one. Uh, the fact that Sakamoto scored from the service line the first three points uh, of this set how much do you think that also helps a guy like Keone Thim who then backs him up? Oh, huge. Makes a big, big difference. If Sakonoko had based, for example, would had missed his first serve, there'd be a little more pressure on Thim to keep his serve in. Now he's getting to just rip away. Tip shot there by Zadonic. Right there is Eleu Choi. D set, Sakonoko just obliterates that set. By the way, a little, a little background on Sakonoko. He's an out left side hitter. This is a new position for him. On the junior national team for, for France, he played on the left side. Now all of a sudden, new position. It's going to take him a, a while. It looks like he's fairly comfortable. Yeah, he, he, what do you think? Okay. He, look, he looks the part. Fim that time got the green light from Charlie Wade to uh, try to go supersonic boom on it. He went a little long with it, and so a uh, point for Emmanuel. Yeah, uh, word is Luis Sakonoko never played opposite on any kind of organized team. Here's Voss. The block was up. Now a little joust above the tape, and what a placement. Trent Rosenthal. The 17-year-old with the veteran-like savvy putting that one to the open floor. He's played so much volleyball at such a high level internationally, all the junior national teams for USA Volleyball, that he just knows where open parts of the court are, like that. Big West Conference Freshman of the Week after his debut performance in the two matches against Loyola Chicago last week. 
Ten serving two. Now it's Guillaume Voss to serve. I read where somebody said they're going to have to name and rename it the Trev Rosenthal freshman of the week. Well, how about the irony here? You had Finn and prior to that, Sakonoko, who were serving thunders from the line. And then here comes the jump floater in G. Voss, and he gets an ace. I guess he just wants to be part of the ace club. You know, he doesn't want to be left out. Eleven serving two. Middle set, and the block is up there by Neuster on Andrew Michael. Now from the outside, Zadonic going cross court and wide. And Hawaii gets the point. Twelve serving two here in the first. Rainbow Warriors hitting 800. Four kills on five attempts, no errors. Emmanuel still looking for kill number one. They're hitting negative 625. It was a big block up front. Six nine and six nine on. The front left attacker. D set. Nieves blocked and roofed. That was Spiros Hawkes jumping up next to Kurt Neuster. Hawaii all about business right now here in this opening frame. For a lineup that hasn't played together very much, they're looking pretty synchronized right now. Outside, Zadonic blocked and roofed. Kurt Neuster next to Rosenthal. And this Manoa Roofing Company donning the hard hats and not letting anything pass. Yes. Three and a half blocks already in the first 14 points. Back row set, that's Feeney. Sending it long, and Hawaii gets to 15 first. In fairly lopsided fashion, they leave 15 to two here in set one. The number is 12. That's the different countries represented combined here between these two rosters of Emmanuel and Hawaii. Six different continents. The only continent left out, Antarctica, interestingly enough. No penguins on, uh, <laughs> or polar bears on either roster. But uh, yeah, pretty incredible when you look at the international flavor for Emmanuel. Some uh, countries and, and, and nations that you don't often necessarily see either. They have Egypt represented, Australia, Portugal, Vietnam. To go along with South Africa, just amazing as well as obviously the United States. Hawaii, a huge international flavor on its side, as has traditionally been the case. Kurt Neuster laying into it, and Hawaii just rolling and seemingly clicking on all cylinders here, C-Mac. Yeah, I love where Trent Rosenthal is really trying to find ways, creative ways to continue to feed the middle. That's gonna be, a, I think, a, an important point of, of contention for Hawaii's uh, offense this year. They've got to develop a really strong middle attack. And the serve goes long by G. Voss. All good things must come to an end, and G. Voss serves it out. It was a seven-point run prior to that out serve by Voss. And so here is Noel Angelier, the 5'11 sophomore setter. Good pass there by Huckus. Back row set, and it's Finn. And it looked like Eichenberger took another one off the noggin. In Hawaii. Don't think it's on purpose, as you see Keone Thim checking on the Emmanuel Libero. That's good to see, but uh, Hawaii kind of headhunting here a little bit yeah. offensively. Nice sportsmanship by Keone right there. To look across the net, make sure Eichenberger is okay. <laughs> but man, that's like, like we said earlier, that's like a 100 mile an hour yeah. baseball being come at you and trying to hit it. Zadonic. Uh, Put a little extra sauce on that one, but he missed the court wide. And Hawaii up 18, serving three. And Tred Rosenthal, who we talked about, never was a spin jump server until he got onto the Manoa campus. Was a jump floater, a la G. Voss, but he's taken to it pretty well. Already with nine service aces to lead the team coming into this match. As that one is poked long by Nieves. And so your early reaction and thoughts here on what we have seen, these little changes made by Charlie Wade uh, with the insertion of Sakonoko at the starting opposite position. Keone Thiem obviously out there in place of Chaz Galloway for tonight. Uh, but 
the order of the servers, starting with Sakonoko and on. How does that impress you? It's, I'm very impressed, especially the way they kept the ball in. And, and uh, Sakonoko, after his fourth one, you know, he, he tried to pull it up and make sure that he kept the, the momentum going. And he sort of short-armed it and got hit it into the net. But his other serves were really impressive. Um, Thim also, um, I think he's much more relaxed when he's gets back there now because he's got somebody else in front of him hitting. And he's, it's not like he's coming off the bench cold, which is really difficult to do. Now he's, he's been playing, he's been hitting, been swinging, and he's much better rhythm. We saw him take a good turn as well. So I, I think that this experiment, so to speak, by Charlie Wade is working just fine so far. All right, let's check in with Ryan Calais Suji while we have a little break in the action. What's up, Ryan? Hey, thanks, going on. Well, Nicholas Eschenberg, the libero for uh, Emmanuel, is really taking on the leadership mantle. He is almost like an assistant coach for this team. He told the team, hey, look, I got hit in the face. I am fine. Look at me. I can still, I am battling. I'm out there. We all need to do the same. He's also talking to his team about just technique, dynamics, uh, really like an assistant coach. The coach actually does not go into the huddle until he's done talking. So the leadership of this libero very important to the team which also explains why he needs to be on the court back over to you guys thanks a lot brian yeah uh, eichenberger a little bit of punishment here uh, having uh, to be endured as he uh, got popped in the dome one by sakonoko one by thim uh, that's not fun as i'm sure you can attest to c-mac yeah I, I think that uh, he may be also sending a message to his blockers to hey guys at least touch yeah. it don't let it come Help a brother out a little yeah, bit. Help a brother out. Uh, good to see him still smiling. Never worse for wear, it appears. And you know, Ryan was talking about his leadership. You alluded to it as well, communicatively speaking. Uh, this is a message that he is also delivering to his teammates. Playing through that and showing some of that toughness, that, that's something that can go a long way as well. Absolutely. As Rosenthal serves it into the net out of the timeout. Serve for with three service aces, three service errors in this opening frame. And guess who Hawaii's next server is? Spiros Hakas, who just brings the heat. Yeah, led the team in aces last year. Their number five server here in this rotation. Here's Nieves, quick jump, good punch up save, Rosenthal, the set from Finn to Hakas. Right down Dole Street. I'm amazed at how well Hawkins is hit from the right side. He's a left side hitter, but whenever he goes to the right, he seems to be connected a higher percentage than he does when he's on the left. The percentage is on Wednesday night, 417, not bad. Pass there by Eichenberger. Here's Nieves from the right side, goes off the block and into the pin. And so the first kill of this match for Emmanuel on their 16th attempt. Lucas Nieves, one of a host of true freshmen in this lineup. Their two starting middles also freshmen. Meanwhile, it is a sophomore in Kurt Neustor who pummels that set. And Hawaii just keeps on clicking. The stronger the connection between Rosenthal and Nurserer gets, the better this team is going to be. And here is Neuster. He's no slouch from behind the service line either. Had two aces the other night to go along with four kills and four blocks. Down the line it goes. That middle set a little low for Greg Botis, so chance for Hawaii Rosenthal. Back row, Hakas. We asked him prior to the match, are you jumping a little higher this year? It just, it just kind of looks like you're getting a little higher off the ground. He said, well, in our vertical testing, I touched the same, but I do feel stronger, he said. Yeah. He's, he's hitting the ball as well as any of his other three years here. And he seems really happy, too. He loves his, his new lineup. Backside, Nieves off the block and out. Yeah, Spiros Hawk is telling us that he still pretty regularly communicates with uh, the former other half of the Greek connection from the previous couple of seasons in Dimitrios Muklias, who's now playing over in Germany at the moment. Yes. 
Chris Sang Chu, 5'8 freshman from Vietnam. Bin Pha, Vietnam to be exact, as Keone Finn got a piece of that joust above the tape. Emmanuel now going back row. That's Zadonic off the block, saved by Hakkas. Backside, Sakanoko off the block and down. And you can feel the crowd sort of swelling in both fear and anticipation on that approach by Louis. Yeah, will they hurt another player or not? Nice reactions by Rebozo, both the Fem and Choi in quick hands. Three kills for Louis, and he's now behind the line to serve with this skyscraper high toss. Loops it over the net and scores an ace. And so that was the off-speeder. So he can get aces at 25 miles an hour or 75 miles an hour. Doesn't make any difference to him, I guess. Aloha ball here in set one for the Rainbow Warriors. An absolutely dominant performance, and this guy set the pace. And as your father would say, the Warriors are playing as if they're double parked. Oh, that one went wide of the antenna. Sakunoko trying to provide the exclamation point to this opening frame. It's like they're in a hurry to get out of here, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, when he's behind the line, yeah. uh, everybody has to be at attention. As that serve goes long and fairly anticlimactic close to set one, but an otherwise impeccable performance by the Rainbow Warriors. They take it 25 to seven. They serve up four aces as a squad, 10 kills, no errors. They hit 7-14, set two coming up. Rio and Hawaii with several highlights from the service line, four aces. Louis Sakonoko helping to set the tone. Keone Thim following that up. G Voss got in on the acing fun. And Sakonoko got his second with a looping top spin serve later on in the set. And then Hawaii at the net was also formidable, C Mac. Three and a half blocks. The first set, they normally average about blocks or around two blocks per set, so they're off to a good start blocking wide. Not many mistakes up front, holding the Lions to only one kill in 19 attempts. Play no errors uh, at the net in their attacking, hitting 714, a big number, and siding out at 100%. Of the seven points that Emmanuel got in that first set, five of them came off. University of Hawaii serving errors. Hawaii with the 714 hitting percentage on the other side, Emmanuel. Uh, it took them a while. In fact, it took them 17 swings to get their first kill. They had two kills hit negative 400, and so they are going to bring in a substitute here to start this second set. It is Santiago Isaguire, 510 freshman from Winter Garden, Florida. Again, a whole ton of underclassmen for the Lions. Number seven, Santiago Isaac And they will be serving first here. Emmanuel coming from Franklin Springs, Georgia. Member of Conference Carolinas. Also a new middle blocker in. Ed Varian Bas Basson. An interesting backstory on, the, on this lineup. Of their hobbies. Like one third of the guys, their favorite thing to do, nap. <laughs> and the other, and the other, the other third said, "I'd love to go skydiving." <laughs> so you got some real daredevils, and you got some guys who could care less. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think I'm falling more on the uh, side of the nappers. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Here is Louis Sakonoko to serve in his debut the other night. Played in two sets. Average to kill per set. Hit negative 125, but off to a much better start here. Three kills hitting 750, couple of aces, and here we go. Almost got another race. No, they're gonna say it did. Bounce off the Terraflex just before that attempted pass. And so ace number three for Louis. And we're starting to see glimpses as to what the rest of this season might have in store here if this uh, serving combination is going to be further utilized by Charlie Way. He develops this off-speed one, which he just, just got the ace on. 
and it's gonna make it really tough for other teams to figure out, do we stay deep and wait for his heater, or do we have to play up a little bit and watch for his off speed? So it really makes him a much more effective server. And that one hit out, and so three nothing in favor of Hawaii. As things start very similarly to how they did in set number one. You saw Isaac Weyer, the new setter out there for Emmanuel. Oh my goodness. Put on a helmet. Keep your head on the swivel. When Louis Sakonoko is behind the service line, he tends to choose violence. I'm telling you, that was like a baseball pitcher throwing it at about 105 miles an hour. That was amazing. Like I said on Wednesday night, he alone is worth the price of admission. Yeah. Come on and watch this guy. There's the off speed, and it's an ace. Right now, Louis Sakonoko five, Emmanuel zero here in set two. This is, this is the, called the yo-yo serving. Hit the hammer deep, keep the servers deep, and then yo-yo them up, up front so they have to run up to get a, a short serve. And he doesn't give it away even. He's really good at disguising how hard he's gonna go. This same boss approach. Is something too. And it's gonna be a rotation error on the Emmanuel side. Keeps the service run alive here for Louis. He had pumped it into the twine, but the Lions were out of order. Some alignment issues that they are tending to now as Eichenberger, one of the team captains directing traffic. And perhaps something that he's gonna to have to do frequently with so many underclassmen on the floor. Exactly. Remember, we talked about it the other night, an Emmanuel roster uh, full of guys who are playing indoor volleyball in an organized and official capacity for the first time. Eichenberger handled that one, set goes outside. Christian Vega is dug up. And Hawaii with its first swing of the set, put down by Guilherme Voss. Give some major props to Eichenberger that time for passing that 70 mile an hour heater. That's a great sign, Vossum. I like that, one of the antis. He has been Vossum throughout his entire career. Seven serving zero. And that one <laughs> found its way into the Emmanuel bench, and uh, you have Aiden Feeney, ever the showman, yeah. who is uh, feigning as though uh, he uh, got his leg uh, cut out from under him. <laughs> he is very camera shy, as you can tell. So if he were a soccer player, would that be like uh, taking a fall? Oh, there would be a red card, yeah. for sure. Outside, here's Thim up the ladder. Nice dig there by Zadonic. He gets the set on the back row, knuckles it over. Diving save, Choi. High ball, Thim. Sheer power through the block. And that gets a rise out of the crowd. How about Elena Choi? What a great story. One of the hardest workers in the gym. Farrington High School. Dog named Skippy. Loves his, loves his uh, family. One of the great all-time interviews last year after the game when he gave the honor to all his French and buddies and his dog. The overpass there, Rosenthal goes to Voss. And that was an interesting one. You had the overpass, and then you had Hawkes receiving it with his hands. The ball was above the tape the entire time. Yeah. So this, this is why I'm, uh, I'm so curious about how this, this chemistry would be. Would they get along with each other? Would they know where each other is on the court? So far, so good as far as this team, this, this new group of the guys playing together, uh, they're, they're playing pretty well. You know, there's no Galloway, he normally starts. There's no Alakai Todd, he normally starts. Two serving nine, Nieves sends it across. Perfect pass there by Choi. D set, Sakonoko. And he lights it a flame again in the direction of Eichenberger. You said it just a moment ago, c -Mac. Give this guy credit for still digging in and, and not succumbing to what could have been some 
traumatization from earlier in the match. And the block way late there, please. Give Eichenberger a break and just touch the ball. Slow it down for this guy. That's Neusterer plugging it through the block and down. And Hawaii gets to 11. And you got G Voss with the dig. Welcome back, Rainbow Warrior basketball team. Tough loss suffered last night at the hands of UC Irvine. They're back on the floor tomorrow night against Riverside. Our coverage on Spectrum Sports begins at 6.30 p.m. Hawaii has lost four straight home games for the first time since 2010. So they'll be looking to break that trend tomorrow against the Highlanders. 10 serving two here in set two. Hawaii hitting 8.33 in the match. Louis Sakonoko has six service aces on the night. Nieves on the D set. Two-hand save there, Voss. Outside, Hakkas, like clockwork. Looks like Hakkas hurt his hand there. See him shaking his hand? Hmm. It might have been on the block. It certainly wasn't on the hit. I'm in blocking. He sprained something. And he was sort of keeping that hand in a fist for a yeah. good moment there. He plays on. That set a little low for Botis. Advantage Hawaii. Neusterer. Fred Rosenthal. Uh, he is delivering some guava jelly here tonight, c -Mac. He really is. His, his hitters yet to make a mistake. He's yet to make a setting error. And they're hitting, oh, just a, a hefty little uh, 773 to the match. And there's Rosenthal on the overpass, couldn't quite get it down. Now three blockers up against Vega, and he wins the battle. Go figure. Christian Vega, the six-foot sophomore from Lake Mary, Florida. Average 1.2 kills per set last year. Good thing, good thing. He really challenged the block there. And it, uh, it paid off. Unfortunately, only their third kill of the night. Yeah, their first kill here in set two. This is Miguel Rodriguez. He is from Lisbon, Portugal. 5'9 junior, transfer from Bethel University. Friddle actually recruited him out of high school, but the financial situation was such that it kind of pushed him to go elsewhere before matriculating back to Franklin Springs, Georgia. Oh, behind the headset that time to Botis, and he hammers it. Give some credit to Eichenberger there for the, for the perfect pass off a very tough serve, and a nice little quick back set. That quick to Botis. Four serving 14, pass by Tim. Backside, here's Hakkas. And that one actually punched back over the net. Hawkes a second time through the block, dug up by Nieves, but we're gonna have a violation against Emmanuel. A double contact is signal, and so Hawaii gets the point. And they get to 15 first in set two. Hawkes still grimacing in some discomfort. We'll keep an eye on that. Welcome back. So Spiros Hawkes appeared to be pointing at his thumb when he was making his way back to the bench during that timeout. And I, th I think you're probably right, C-Mac. Maybe took an awkward hit off of the thumb when he was attempting block earlier in the set. But he's still out there. Good dig there by Eleu Choi. And now Sakanoko. That one he caught a little fat. And that's his first hitting error of the match. Hawaii's first hitting error of the match. <laughs> They're hitting seven. They were hitting 720 before that. It's like a baseball average, by the way. <laughs> And so 720 will make you uh, all world. Yeah, yeah, uh, greatest baseball player ever if you're, uh, if you're batting 720. Uh, down to a uh, much more pedestrian 654 for the match yeah. after that hitting error. And as you take a look at James Friddle, did we uh, get, uh, we, we did in the pregame, but we've we got to make sure we get another shot of uh, the Friddle pants that he is donning tonight. It's pants watch every time James Friddle is on the court. Yeah. Uh, that serve goes into the net. He is known for some pretty unique 
freestyle selections, and there you see the E for Emmanuel. All over what would otherwise be a very standard pair of gray pants. I ran into him in the hallway before the game, and he said, yeah, it is a little muted tonight, <laughs> but um, I want to pay, pay homage to my school. Uh, and he said, I said also, I'm going to do the best I can to get every player in the game tonight so that everybody can say they made this trip. And they got to see Pearl Harbor, Polynesian Cultural Center, and they got to play the Stan Sheriff Center. Yeah, pretty cool Pretty good trip. guy. Yeah, and he's been smiling uh, throughout this experience, even though this Hanaho rematch has so far been pretty tough on the Lions. Here's Zadonic. And there is Sakunoko. After a couple of hitting errors for Hawaii, he's able to right the ship. He just punishes the block. I mean, just it, punishes. Is, it is as powerful a pop and as echoing a sound as you have ever heard, I think, from a Hawaii hitter. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. He's a little like Clay Stanley that way when he hits the, you know, who was one of the great servers in the world, you know, for many years when he played a couple of Olympics and I think three Olympics and, and uh, Sakanaka hits the ball about that hard and with accuracy. We have a discussion now between the officials. Wayne Lee, the R1, Randy Rubinall, the R2, Hunter Heliniak, and Kerwin Stentrum, the two line judges. I'm not sure what this is necessarily referring to, perhaps some kind of rotation issue that could have yeah. occurred earlier in the set. Yeah, or a, a substitution issue where the um, player went back in the wrong position or the wrong person served. A little bit tricky figuring out. We'll find out though. One cool thing though is we've had no replays tonight. Yeah. So. Crowd getting a little could, antsy here. Could have some linesmen for that and all the ref all the referees out here tonight. I mean. We talk about Louis Sakanoko, and if you are on the other side of the net when he's serving or hitting, you know, be aware. Uh, that goes for everybody that's near the court, including the line judges. Yeah, for sure. Well, Sakanoko already took out one of the, the bench players for <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel. Right, yeah. So anything's, anything's possible. Yeah, this is definitely a, a rotation issue or a... The wrong server issue. Watch it. Oh, look at this. Boom. Feeney gets hit in the foot, and he goes down for the count. His and Os down goes Feeney. His Oscar moment. <laughs> <laughs> that is good stuff. Oh, man. He's been a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, not scared to uh, put a little extra into some of his celebrations. But he's, he's looking like he's having a good time. And, and really, that's kind of been the vibe from this entire Emmanuel team here this week. Yeah. Well, the crowd trying to entertain itself. They started doing the rainbows chant. Now they're making some noise uh, because they're running a uh, game on the big screen above. And they're trying to sort this out. This feels and looks like a situation where there was a rotation issue that was caught after the fact, and so now the officials have to figure out how to retroactively correct that. Yeah, exactly. For those who won't, might have must, for those who just joined us, you saw a shot there of Nicholas Eichenberger, who took a shot in the face. You can still tell his left side of his face is still redder than the right side. There he is. And uh, he took a shot from Sakanoko that almost knocked him out. He's their leader. He's their coach on the floor. Such an important part of this team. And he's uh, going to probably have the notion to pop a couple of Advils uh, when this thing yeah. is done. Yeah. Serving. 17 serving seven. Some 
17 serving seven as we play on. No formal explanation, at least announced by the officials, but we got word as that one was put over by Tred Rosenthal uh, that there was an issue with the scoring system software uh, that for some reason doesn't allow for three subs in a single position, even though that is legal and allowed. Uh, the software wasn't capable of showing that and signifying that. And Sakunoko once again with the laser that gets overpassed and then G Boss caught it in the sweet spot. So it wasn't actually a rotation issue, it was a substitution issue in yeah. essence. More vintage Sakunoko. <laughs> I think he's enjoying the change up here. No, I'll take that back. With the, the heater. Oh, that was a big swing there by Harrison Coelho. Back row, Hawkes dug up by Eichenberger. Coelho caught the block of Hawaii, and then Voss hammers it down as he falls to the floor. And Emmanuel is going to signal for a timeout. Well, pause in the action with what they were trying to sort out there across the way, but it didn't seem to slow Hawaii down. It certainly didn't slow Louis Sakanoko's serve down as Hawaii now on a 4-0 run and closing in here in the second. You know, you know I'm, I'm surprised that this lineup here hasn't had more miscommunication and missteps, either by Rosenthal or by the attackers. Here's Choi with a nice dig. Hawkins out of the back row. Nice dig by Eckenberger to keep that rally alive. And at the end of it here, watch Voss. He just goes up, sub a little bit behind him, but he catches it and gets a hand up. Well, while we have a break in the action, let's check out tonight's Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line. Uh, this is crazy. Look at this. The number of sports programs for Emmanuel University, 36 compared to 21 for Hawaii. Now, it should be noted as a caveat that not all of those sports programs for Emmanuel uh, are sanctioned by the NCAA. Uh, they have such sports, including bass fishing, and they compete in one of a couple of circuits, including college major league fishing, uh, where they are a national power. Here's some of the other uh, notable sports. You have acrobatics and tumbling, archery, clay target shooting, triathlon, cornhole and disc golf, baby. All right. Didn't you major in cornhole when you were in college? <laughs> Or was it disco? You know, this is from a school that only has 800 students, 800 plus. So a very small school. So I have a feeling that pretty much everybody in school plays something. Yeah, the Bass Fishing National Championship took place on Lake Toro in Kissimmee, Florida. And it's an ace. Ace number seven for Louis Sakonoko. Five straight points for the Rainbow Warriors. And that's a classic example of Sakonoko being able to pull the trigger, make it look like he's gonna hit the heater, and it comes up and just hits it short. Meantime, Eichenberger, their best passer, arguably their best player, is back, almost in the back line, ready for the heater. Another blistering blast by Louis Sakonoko. And that is his eighth ace. The individual single match record for aces for Hawaii is nine. Sakonoko is sitting on eight. We haven't played two full sets yet. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Close to Steo Haridis, by the way. Nine aces twice. He went for it in its entirety right there, but hit it into the string, and he gets an ovation from the fans. Uh, there are some of those moments, right, over the course of Hawaii volleyball history where uh, an individual comes into the program and immediately makes an introductory announcement like, Hello World, and that's exactly what Louis Sakonoko has done here this week. Yeah. And guess who's serving next? 
<laughs> it's Keone Thib. The, the, the other 70 mile an hour heater guy. The hits keep coming that's, here. That's got to make it really tough on the receiving team to be able to take that kind of barrage of speed back to back. 10 total aces for Hawaii. That one passed tight to the net. And it ends up the Hawaii point. Well, Charlie was a little excited when he talked to us before the match. He sort of let us in on what his game plan was. Uh, and he, he realizes the buzz that was going around about some of the hard-hitting servers that Hawaii has in Keone Thin and Louis Sakonoko, and he wanted to play up to it. And certainly it is paying off here on Aloha Ball in set two. Great dig by Sakonoko. Here's Hakus by three blockers, goes off the touch and down, and Hawaii takes set two, 25 to eight. Speaking of eight, eight service aces for Louis Sakonoko in his first career start. And Hawaii will have an opportunity to crack open the broom closet. back here the Pizza Hut match of statistics it has been all Hawaii C-Mac absolutely probably in every single category Hawaii kills 23 to 4 that's huge you see the errors 11-2 Manuel's winning that one and uh, kill percentage look at 636 for Hawaii three blocks to zero I mean everywhere you look but look at the the, the hitting uh, aces Hawaii with 11 aces nine errors so nine of uh, the 15 points that Emmanuel's gotten tonight have come off Hawaii service errors. So Charlie Wade trying something a little different, right? And obviously he told us before the match, hey, look, I know what I have in Alaka Todd on the opposite side. I know what I have in Chaz Galloway, who he's giving a little bit of uh, extended rest to here this week. Uh, and so he's trying something that I think he feels, hey, look, if we are able to discover how to exploit our ability from the service line, then more power to us. Uh, and he has several weeks here through the non-conference slate to further test that. And of course, he can always go back to these other now established commodities, yep. veteran players that he knows what he's going to get out of. Well, this lineup looks pretty flawless right yeah. now, especially the, the front end of the lineup with the servers. We got the 70 mile an hour heaters in, uh, in Sakonoko and Thim just to start the lineup. I mean, that's really a tough way to start every game for the other team. Great way to start for Hawaii if those two are serving in. We're going to see another reserve player for the Rainbow Warriors, Alex Parks who's going to be making his Rainbow Warrior debut. Redshirted last year, a 2022 graduate of Marino School. Played volleyball, football, and swam in high school. Both his parents were collegiate swimmers. And uh, also a chess player. This was earlier today. Uh, you have Kurt Neusterer, who is a card-carrying yeah. chess uh I don't know if we can say master, but certainly a guy who uh, has an affinity for the game. You have Tred Rosenthal, uh, who sort of takes the Jakob Tella spot as uh, one of the primary competitors with Kurt. Uh, and it's just great to see these guys is, gathering together. I think Rosenthal won today, if I'm not mistaken. Is that's that true? The, that's the word, yeah. And uh, Kurt was, uh, was a little beside himself about it. He, uh, he joked around. He says, I lost to a minor. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. But that's really cool, and good to see that uh, chess tradition continue. Abdallah Rashdi, who is from Cairo, Egypt. Also getting the nod here on the Emmanuel side. Sakonoko getting things started from the service line. And the set was off the mark. Aiden Feeney had nowhere to go with it. Hits it into the pin, and so... Uh, Louis Sakonoko, three for three. He has uh, started at the service line for Hawaii, and they have scored the first point each set. Exactly what Charlie Wade's strategy is. And we're going to have a whistle, and we're going to have another alignment issue for the Lions, giving Hawaii a free point. That's one of the disadvantages of Coach Frittle's strategy 
to get every player into the contest before the weekend's up. And so what happens is players are playing in different positions, rotation's different, and then all of a sudden there's some overlapping, and they get a, Hawaii gets a free point. So here's Sakonoko. That one tickled the tape, it actually slowed it down, made it a little more manageable, and then Feeney able to pound that one. And he flexes for his fellow Lions mates. The Lions oh. roar there from Aiden Feeney. That's funny. The swing is pretty good, but the celebration, I think, is even better. There you go. Watch. Watch this. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd oh, reacting to the goodness. replay of that one overhead, and so is Feeney. <laughs> As he jump floats it across. Outside, Keone Thim. Oh, good punch-up save by the new setter, Abdallah Rashti. Thim a second time. That was thunderous. Tony Finn just gets up so high, saw the line well, just hangs up there and has great vision. He saw the, the, the block taken away his cross court, so he went down the line. Back bump set. The swing from Coelho's blocked. Coelho, second crack at it, and rolls it into the twine. By the way, uh, Louis Sakamoko was credited with an ace in that first uh, service run here to start this set, and so that gives him nine. That ties the individual single match record for the Rainbow Warriors. We mentioned Kostas Theo Herides. He achieved nine aces twice in his career, and Sakamoko, in his very first start, gets nine aces. And Kostas may be watching right now. He loves his Warrior Volleyball. We're going to get a challenge here from the Lions. Sounds like they are challenging a foot fault somewhere in that last sequence. Again, we've talked about the new challenge dynamic here this season. The DV Sport camera system being utilized by the officials. They still have it was, it was, it was a, a net, net violation, violation challenge. Okay, it was announced as a foot fault here in the arena, but it looks like they're challenging the net violation, and it looked like they might have a beef, potentially. Ab absolutely. I thought the, the net violation by Hawaii occurred before the ball hit the ground. Again, they have the DV Sport Cam system. They also have the angles that Spectrum Sports provides. And so, in this instance, the official really with the option to maneuver between Spectrum Sports cams and the DV Sport replay system. Uh, Kurt Neustor coming over. We used to be the most popular people in the house, right? When, uh, when the official scorer's table was uh, on the same side as us and yeah. uh, the, the R2 was on our side and uh, they would... Uh, crowd around us trying to look yeah. at our replays because it was the same thing that the officials were consistently looking at. Uh, now they're across the way, but Kurt came over to ask you if he committed the net violation. I told him yes. He did. Call us over to our net violation Lions keep their challenge and Call reverse, point Lions. It is two serving three. And here's Harrison Coelho, 6 1 senior from Coconut Creek, Florida. And that one stays on the Lions side. And so rotating into the match now is Alex Parks. And the other middle is going to serve Kurt Neustor. This is a smart idea by Kelly Wade, I think, to develop a third middle just in case anything happens to either Neustra or G. Voss. Outside, and it's a block. It was Parks jumping up next to Rosenthal, but certainly Tread getting all of that one. Yeah. Yes! 
good solid block up here, but yeah, you're right, Trenton is doing that most of that by himself, but Parks, I think, will get credit for half a block. Hawaii with four total team blocks here in this match. Five serving two. A little extra heat on that one from Neuster. And then the block was up. Parks definitely got that one. What a layout play by Eichenberger to keep the point alive. Middle set. Parks wrist away. Missed it wide. How about Eichenberger in the middle of that rally? Just giving it up. Manage to flip the ball back onto the court. Watch how he pops this back toward the court. Most guys would have popped that back into the stands. Now I can burn. You know, Hawaii scrambling, and it's an ace for the Lions. Their first ace of the match. And it comes courtesy Greg Botus. A 6 6 freshman from Delafield, Wisconsin. Four serving five. And over on two goes Rosenthal, but he follows through into the net. And so we are tied at five here in the third. And that is the first tie of the match. Other than 0-0. Zero, zero. Except for when it was 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> Rosenthal going outside, here's Hawkes. He unties it. We talked about Spiros before the game about you know, his job, how we thought it improved. He says, no, my strength has improved. And I said, no, your English has gotten even better. He was very proud that we noticed that his English has gotten better. It's, not even any kind of an accent. And there he is on the joust winning the battle. Yeah, he was even having a hard time. I guess you could say his, his acclimation to the English language and, and life here in Hawaii uh, has now lasted so long. Uh, he was having a hard time remembering Greek terms. We asked him, all right, what's a Greek term for a spike or a Greek term for a point? He's like, let me think about that for a moment. Yeah. And he finally <laughs> did come up with for a spike, a uh, hot feet. Oh, the block was up and it was stout, but a net violation against Hawaii again. Gives Emmanuel the point. Assist from Nicholas Eichenberg. I think Alex Parks might have gotten the net there. Oh, oh, he's a lot of adrenaline running through his veins right now. And his first shot at playing in the Stan Sheriff Center. Here's Abdallah Rashti. Hawkes rising high. He was in the stratosphere. Now not only does he jump well, but his arm swing is such that he makes, makes a really high contact point. So he pretty much can go over just about any block. He gets in on the aces fun as well. Hawkes with his first service ace of the match. Came into this one six aces away from reaching the top ten in Hawaii career history. Here's a guy who's been uh, relegated to the number four or five server now. Now that he's been superseded by Sakadoku and Bim. That was Hawkes' 100th career service ace. And he's going to set up Sakanoko, who hits it long, no touch up front. One of unforced errors, uncharacteristic of Hawaii, and I don't think Charlie Wade's happy about that. You know, he's a guy who does not like errors at all. He hates them. He wants his team to be, even though he's tinkering a little bit with the lineup, he wants his team to be playing well. they got to... Tough road trip coming up. Uh, obviously, after a week off, they'll have a couple of matches at Purdue Fort Wayne. Also taking on Ball State on that trip. Tip shot there by Finn. And the block is up on Coelho. And returning it to sender is Alex Parks. 
Smith, nice move to the outside, penetrates over the net and down. Oh, he's got to feel good about that one. And he now retreats back behind the line to serve. So cool night here for Alex Parks. Been waiting in the wings a little bit, getting some action. And it's an ace. The 14th service ace for this Hawaii team. Yeah, this, is, this is something the Hawaii, Hawaii team works very hard on every day. It's, it's, something, it's not something they kind of like serve 10 good serves at the end of practice. And they constantly work on their serve, every single guy. Feeney hit it cross court and out, no touch up front. And Hawaii gets to 12. Feeney again. Did that one get a touch? No, it did not. So back-to-back -back hitting errors there for Feeney. Hawaii up 13-7, and despite the 15-point media timeout coming up. Welcome back. Next week, Rainbow Wahine basketball back home. Taking on Long Beach State on Thursday. Our coverage on Spectrum Sports. Begins at 6.30 p.m. And how about Laura Beeman's squad going on the road and taking down UC Irvine last night. 56-49 to remain undefeated atop the standings in the Big West Conference. Meanwhile, the Rainbow Warriors, they've been flexing all night long here against Emmanuel in this Hanaho rematch. A 13-7 in the third. Nice last min minute maneuver there by Zadonic to keep the play alive. Sakonoko is dug up over the net. Backside, Sakonoko again, and he is roofed. Goes off the block and in. Sakonoko thought it went off the block and caromed out, and I think Charlie Wade might feel inclined to uh, issue a challenge here. I, I thought it was out as well. I think this will be a successful challenge. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see if we can tell from this replay. Uh, it looks like it's way out. Oh, not even close. Yeah, Luis Sakonoko had that uh, very puzzled look immediately after that call was made. And yeah, Wayne Lee, the R1, I mean, that's, that's right there. But it happens so fast, especially yeah. when this guy hits the volleyball. So. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, understandable, I think, at times, in real time, yeah. not to necessarily see it as be, it looks it, like here This should be replay. an easy call, though. Yeah. Not even close to the line at all. Maybe he's looking for the fact the ball might have hit Sakonoko on the way out right there in the knee, maybe, but... Yeah, that could be another part of this. You're right. Looks like... I think he's in a... Well, I think he's going to make it a successful challenge. So give Lou the kill. He now has six kills to go along with his single match record tying nine aces. Hawaii with its 14 team aces tonight, setting a season high mark. By the way, uh, 20 service aces in a match, uh, the school record against Long Island in February of 2022. Coelho pumps it long, no touch. And Hawaii gets to 15. And that gets us to another timeout. So set three looking a lot like the first two so far. Hawaii up big.
Welcome back. The Hawaii baseball team hosting its third annual For the Love of the Game celebration Tuesday, January 23rd here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. You can interact with the Rainbow Warrior baseball student athletes and coaches, take part in live and silent auctions in addition to the food and drink that you can enjoy from popular local restaurants. Tickets for the celebration on sale now at Hawaii Athletics. Dot com. Alex Park still serving out of the timeout. Sort of handcuffed Eichenberger on that one. Coelho sends it out. No touch. That is the eighth hitting error in this third frame for Emmanuel. They are hitting negative 245 for the match. A lot of self-inflicted wounds to say the least. Backside, this is Feeney, and he finds the floor and does the Feeney dance. First pass, Harrison Paul. I like it. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty entertaining. Here's Andrew Michael, 6'5 freshman from Melbourne, Australia. Sakanoko through the block and down. What a debut week it has been for the freshman Frenchman, Sakonoko, who now has seven kills, hitting 455 here in his first career start. Nine service aces and a chance here to set the single match record. Wouldn't that be something? Took something off. Here's Feeney. That one pinballed around, you had Choi, who was right there on the cover. But Neusterer tried to play it, and it becomes a kill for Feeney, who does the Feeney dance. <laughs> As only he can do. It's amazing. You know, I thought that last serve by Sakanoko, by the way, was I thought one of his best serves of the night. The off-speeder that almost dropped inside the 10-foot line. Good cover there by Choi here, Thim. And he sends it out. Oh, there was a touch called by the line judge. And so they will reverse the call immediately and give the point to Hawaii. But the Lions players are urging their head coach, James Friddle, to challenge the call because they said there was no such touch. And so you spoke too soon earlier, C. Mac. You, you, you sort of... Uh, the broadcaster jinx. You I sort of bragged sorry. about, you know, the fact that we didn't have a, a, a replay challenge for a good part of this match. And uh, now they're coming in droves. Hard to tell there. His fingers didn't go back, but it looked like it goes right toward his right hand. It was Roshni who was trying to provide resistance here. The call on the floor by the line judge was a touch. The initial call by Wayne Lee, the R1, was no touch. But they ended up ruling it a Hawaii point. We'll see if this stands here. Interesting what we have seen here through the first two weeks of this season, C-Mac. A somewhat revamped Hawaii roster, right? With the losses of, I mean, some absolute juggernauts, right? Jakob Tella, the still reigning national player of the year. Demetrius Muklias, an All-American. Kanaya Kana, Philip Umler, Brett Schuert, who ended up transferring to UC Irvine. And so Charlie Wade having to replace and rebuild around the returning nucleus. Um, and doing so, in the case of Louis Sakonoko, with a guy who arrived in Manoa late in the game, just at the turn of the semester. And, uh, just interesting, the adjustments that we have seen Charlie Wade making on the fly here this young season. Exactly, and we got to give a lot of credit to Colton Cowell, who was playing with Sakonoko in France and recommended that Louis transfer at the semester and give Hawaii a shot, and I don't think Louis has regretted it at all. He's loving this crowd, that's for sure. And again, a glimpse, perhaps, uh, not just 
to the future of this season, but years beyond. You have the freshman setter in Tred Rosenthal, a freshman here in Louis Sakonoko who is making a case uh, to see a lot more playing time and, and maybe even more starts going forward at that opposite position. You know why Coach Frittle's smiling there? He, he won, won the a challenge. challenge. Yeah. He's taking the point, point himself. So it goes from 18 serving 9 to 10 serving 17. I don't think it would have made that better if he would have done the Frittle. If he would have done the... Uh, the Feeny dance. The, the Feeny dance. Yes. That would have been good. And uh, there it is. He's doing it now. Oh, they're all doing it. Feeny just served an ace. And yes, now Emmanuel uh, in unison yeah. performing the Feeny dance. <laughs> How would you describe it? It's, it's kind of like a, like a happy penguin flap or something. Yeah. D set, Sakanoko explodes on it. At the block and down. He better be thanking Fred Rosenthal as well. Rosenthal gave him only one blocker. That's a hitter's dream. Louie looking like the real deal here, C-Mac. Yeah, he, he is. Him. Outside, and you had the whiff there by the middle, Greg Botis. You end up calling four touches against the Lions. And so 19 serving 11. I think, I think Fim's last one there was probably around 70, 65, 70. So that one tickled the tape. Feeney off of one foot, saved by Neuster, the swing by Rosenthal on two. Now from the back row, and that was pulverized by Eli Zadonik. That was a good swing by Zadonik. Up against three blockers, and he managed to hammer it through. Gets a lot of credit there. Zadonik has a couple of uh, nicknames that he reportedly goes by. One of them is Fly Guy Eli. The other one is uh, Supersonic Zadonik. Which one do you like? Oh, I like both of them. And that one curls over the net and down for Miguel Rodriguez. A lot of celebration on the bench and the floor for Emmanuel. Good pass by them. Hawkins lays the cement down. That was a detonation. Rashti turns around to his teammates and says, I'm not sure what else I could do. It wasn't a fair fight right there. Hakas with nine kills on 12 swings, one hitting error, hit 667 to this point in the match. And now Kai Taylor serving sub here for the Rainbow Warriors. Oh, and he pumps up the MPHs a little bit, but goes just a hair beyond the end line. So, on paper, obviously, this is Emmanuel, a team that is preseason picked eighth in Conference Carolinas, a team that, by any measurement, uh, would uh, be up against an extremely tall assignment to be competitive uh, with Hawaii, the currently fourth-ranked team in the country, as that one is tapped down by Alex Parks. And that does make the evaluation of Hawaii's play this week a little bit trickier, but how would you evaluate what we've seen from this Rainbow Warriors squad? Well, I really think they've, they've done a really, really good job of, uh, of adjusting, um, especially on Wednesday night when they weren't playing that well and they managed to somehow pull it out. Hammered off the block and out and for an Emmanuel points to Dominic again. And then tonight they, they obviously looked at film and, uh, and uh, worked on the things that didn't do well on Wednesday night. And the first two sets were, were almost flawless. And then there were some substitutions here in the third, so the perfection has dropped off a little bit. But overall, you got to give tonight's performance, I would say, like an A minus at least. Backside, Pacus, O-T-T, -T, was one-on-one -on -one with Zadonic. 
And he took it to another floor. Once again, Trent Roosevelt giving his hitters one-on-one -on -one situations, and hitters just love that. Hawk is now to serve. That goes long. He's always starting to miss some serves here, and that's the other part of it for Charlie, right, is uh, even though they're playing Emmanuel on the other side of the net, he wants to see Hawaii serving in, and they're serving with pace, hard and heavy in a lot of instances, in, and even though the ace numbers might not be the same if you were playing perhaps a team that might be a little bit more proficient in serve-receive, uh, that's what Charlie wants to see. Yeah, absolutely. He wants to see efficiency and pace, and I think the team overall have given given them that all uh, Wednesday and Friday. Compared to last week when they had 27 yeah. serves out, big improvement. Seventeen serving 22. Good pass there by Choi outside. Fim hanging and banging off the block and out. I like the way that Kimmy that time mixed up his shot. Rather than hitting that heavy, hard cross-court shot into the into the meat of the block, he chose to tool it off and chisel it off the end blocker. Very smart play. Here's Cole Otmar, 6'5 redshirt sophomore from Spangle, Washington, in his third year with the program. Appeared in one match last season. That was against Barton. And had eight kills in that performance. And he is back to serve. Right side, here's Feeney. Blocked and roofed. That was Neusterer jumping up next to Thim, and so it is Aloha Paul. And they will rise here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center and announced attendance of 4,774 through the turnstile. And we have yet to get to the conference part of the season. Watch this place fill up. Oh, yeah. Middle set, and that was a nice hit by Andrew Michael, and so they will remain standing as it remains a little ball. And we're going to have a serving sub on the Lions side, Sang Chu checks in. One of the things that Andrew Michael wanted to do before he died, visit Hawaii. <laughs> Bucket list check. Yep. And it's an out serve. And that's how this one comes to an end. Hawaii takes it. Aloha behind 14 service errors and a near record setting performance by first time starter Louis Sakanoko. A program record tying nine service aces to go along with his eight kills. Uh, and you can suggest, I don't think it is uh, being uh, overly superlative to say that a star is perhaps born here in Manoa? I would agree. A star has been born, and he is the real deal. And I think he's going to bring other players along with him to, uh, to achieve excellence night in and night out, especially from behind this service line. That's changed everything. Tonight, when them and Sakanoko served back-to-back, -back, that was scary. That was scary. It was a sight to behold. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. And for Emmanuel, we give it to uh, Nick Eichenberger. He deserves it just for the sheer toughness that he displayed here. Uh, taking a couple of shots off the dome and still continuing to play admirably out there for the Lions. Three assists and a dig. And Luis Sakonoko looks a little bit different after he uh, cut the hair, but uh, the results are spectacular. Eight kills at 385, a block, two digs, and again, record tying nine service aces. I think he just flies higher now, more, he's had more <laughs> yeah, efficient. A lighter. Yeah. yeah, he's aerodynamically more efficient. <laughs> That's why he's able to play so well. Oh man, he's really fun. Hawaii hits 491 for the match, and they improve to three and one on the season. Let's send it over to Scott Robbs. Coach, congratulations. I know one of the emphasis going into tonight's match was your service game. You had to be pleased. Yeah, well, I mean, not terribly. You know, we, we missed more than I would have liked, but 
you know, when you serve five times in a row and then miss, it's a little more palatable. Um, I'd say we were very productive, but not terribly efficient. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of our team right now. You know, not a lot of new pieces and um, we got a lot of work to do for sure. One of those new pieces getting his first start for you tonight, Louis Sakanoko. He had this place roaring. Yeah, he really did. Um, you know, he, he got here on the 26th of December, so he'd only, he's only practiced with us like eight, 10 times. Um, we didn't have uh, a second setter all week, so this is the only time we've played literally six on six all week, so I felt I would need to leave those guys out there. You know, we're trying some different combinations on the lineup, and I, we needed to see him for the whole time, and uh, he's super dynamic, and it got a high ceiling. Uh, little more errors than we'd like, but hopefully over some time we can uh, kind of smooth that out. But yeah, exciting player for sure. So what's that mean for your opposite position right now? Uh, we got two, three guys that can play at a high level. You're not gonna answer that yet, huh? I just did. <laughs> well, I mean, we got two, three guys that can play at a really high level. Thanks coach. Yeah, thanks. Back over to you, Kanoa. <laughs> <laughs> little cat and mouse action there between Scott Robbs. And Charlie Wade, yeah, uh, Louis Sakanoko, perhaps the uh, best part about it, uh, he's a freshman. Yeah. He is uh, a new arrival here in Manoa and making quite a splash here this week. Give you the last thought real quick, C-Mac. Um, well, I, I just think that what Charlie said earlier last week and this week, he said, well, you know, this team, we've got a lot of pieces. We're dynamic, we're exciting, we're fun to watch, but we just haven't quite all put it, put it together yet. And I think little by little, this team's going to get better and better the ceiling is high for this team. They're going to go on the road, uh, get a week off, then they go on the road for eight days, play some really good teams in the Midwest, and come back and get closer and closer to conference and the, uh, the Outrigger tournament. And I think the fans should really come out and support this team. They're really good, really fun to watch. All right, so that'll do it for us. Don't forget about the post-game show as the Corner Crew will break down what transpired here on the uh, Hanaho rematch night between Hawaii and Emmanuel Rainbow Warriors, taking it by way of a sweep. But for now, for C-Mac, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, everybody, we bid you aloha from Manoa. to Hawaii manual night number two. We start off the service game of the Rainbow Warriors, which was very effective. Hawaii with 14 service aces on the night to 11 service errors. Nine of those by the freshman Frenchman, Louis Sakonoko. Blocking-wise, Hawaii again, pretty dominant at the net, out blocking the Lions seven and a half to nothing. Many players had three or more blocks, including Rosenthal, Neustor, and Hawkins. And talking about Spittles, he quietly had a match high 10 kills on the night, many of them going up and straight back down. 10 kills on 13 swings, only one error for the Greek native. He hit 692 on the evening. But the story of this young man out of Paris, fresh and new to the program, he was electrifying. Louis Sakonoko from the opposite position, that one right into the grill. Not only was he outstanding hitting at the net, nine service aces, which ties a school record held by Kosas Thea Heredia said Hawaii makes it easy in three. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post game show. Hi everybody, thanks for sticking around. Scott, James, Ryan, and if you don't know who this guy is, you probably do by now. Louis Sakonoko, the freshman from Paris, France. Bonjour. Bonjour. Okay, that's all I know. Bonsoir. Yeah. <laughs> Ça va et toi? <laughs> uh, bonsoir. Bonsoir. Okay, what's good night. bonjour? Good day. Okay. And bonsoir is good okay. night. Okay. Well, what was it like being out there getting your first start? That's insane. I really love it. That was really cool. Uh, I was really happy to be there with all these people. Thanks for all the fans to be here and make some noise. That's really, really cool. I try to do my best here. Louis, talk to us about how you got here. Did you hear about Hawaii Volleyball before? Uh, and had you ever been to Hawaii just in general? What was uh, the decision and how was the experience and uh, decision to come to Hawaii? Um, I, I was never coming to Hawaii because I never go in America, simply. And I want to come in U.S. because I want to do school and volleyball. This is the principal thing. And I, I know Hawaii before that. I know that. But... Um, for me, it's like, I can't be here. I'm not that good. 
So Colton helped me to come here. He called the coach to say, hey, Louis is a really good player, can he come? And after coach called me, I sent video, highlight, and she's why I'm here. And I'm really happy to be here. I do my best to be, to be the best. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about it before the game a little bit. This was your first night ever in a game playing as an opposite. Talk to us a little bit about maybe the difficulties or what that experience was like going in and having to switch position in a starting position. Yeah, uh, it's the first time I play opposite and I like it. That's pretty cool. It's pretty hard in Debo because I don't know that. I only do a pipe, so I got two angle and in Debo I got cross and line. It's same, a bit different, but I like it. And yeah, Tread sent me good ball and that was really cool. All team, all the, the, the team was really good and I appreciate it. You know, we saw you briefly on Wednesday and we saw your serving right away. That's what stood out tonight. You tied the school record with nine service aces. Has that always been one of your strengths, the service game? Yeah, because um, I'm, I'm here for two year, weeks. I'm learned two weeks ago. So it's pretty hard to know to play with Tread and all the team. Is, they are really good, but some time needed. So the service is the only thing, it's you with you. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty strong on this because it's only me, whatever the word, and I'm cool with that. What has it been like joining the team uh, with your teammates? Because you did come late. This team already worked, you know, they were together. They had time to bond and to build relationships. But you came in, uh, just as you said, a few weeks ago. What was that like and how were you received by the team? That was really cool. That was so kind. I get a little scared at the end, because uh, at the start, because I'm saying, ah, they are here for six months together, how that will be? And that's so kind, they are really kind. Oh, if I need something, they can be here for me. Uh, really good teammate. I, I can dream better than this, probably. You've only been here for two weeks, you said, but I, I'm just curious, you probably haven't had a chance to really go out and explore Hawaii, but what have you liked about this place the most so far? The weather. <laughs> so hot. To oh, us, wow. it's freezing. Oh, oh, it's super cold. In Paris, so right, cold. in Paris right now, it's snow and minus nine. So, so I'm really Celsius. Celsius. Oh, Celsius. Okay. So like. That's like 20 degrees. Maybe less. So that's so cool to be here. Weather, all of our I like it. The beach, the weather, the school, volley, yeah. the crowd, all fans. I'm, I'm really happy about that. All right, before we let you go, we always like to have the players that are from uh, another country. If you got friends or family back in Paris watching you right now, you want to give them a little shout out in French for us? Bah écoutez, si vous regardez, euh, merci beaucoup, ça fait plaisir. Et euh, en espérant vous faire rêver un peu plus euh, chaque jour. En vrai, euh, 9 faits c'est bien, ils sont en mètre 10 maintenant. So what did you say? Uh, if I... Oh, that's hard to translate it. <laughs> were, you, were you just saying hello to friends and family, basically? Yeah, basically. And I said, I put 9 A's today, let's try to put 10 next week. <laughs> I like that. Ah, I like, I like that. that. Well, if you like cold weather, when you guys go on the road in two weeks, Yep. You're going to get your fill of cold weather in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. Awesome debut. Congratulations. Thank you very I'm much. sure we'll have you back here again. Hope so. Absolutely. I will do my best for that. All right. Louis Sakonoko, one Thank of the stars from tonight. Nine aces in his debut.